Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Recently on Twitter there's been a lot of talk about alternate arrangements for the Orion spacecraft uh, because people have been talking about potentially the cancellation of NASA's Space Launch System or SLS. The Orion spacecraft is NASA's spacecraft to get people over to the moon and back where at, and but not on the surface. On the surface is a whole other thing. And then Space Launch System is the rocket that would get it there. Uh, but if you cancel the rocket that would get it there, that leaves it without a ride. So people have been contemplating other p potential rides. I am not thrilled with SLS. However, uh, every time in my life that people have changed plans, it's basically set us back a decade. And I know people are really excited about SpaceX and Elon and everything, but uh, it's just that every time people have been excited about some alternate idea, it's taken a, a lot longer than anybody expected. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm not thrilled with changes of plans uh, based on the history of this, but let's set that aside for now. Let's say we want an alternate ride for Ryan just as a redundancy or something like that. So, people have been talking about putting Orion with the upper stage that's supposed to get it to the moon on another rocket. And there are two main upper stages that would get it to the moon. If you're just doing a flyby of the moon and not actually making orbit around the moon, uh, one option is ICPS, which is the small one. It is the interim cryogenic stage, and it only has one RL-10 engine. And that is basically a leftover of previous rockets and then there's the big one which is the exploration upper stage with four RL-10 engines so much larger let's just say by a factor of four and that's not only meant to get Orion over to the moon but also a module of the lunar gateway potentially now Lunar Gateway modules could go on other rockets, so we don't really need EUS to do that part as well, but it would be potentially nice, I don't know. There has been talk of another option, and that's to use the upper stage from Centaur 5, uh, sorry, I, I slipped up, upper stage from Vulcan, which is Centaur 5, that's Centaur 5 is the name of the upper stage, and that has two RL-10 engines, so it's in the middle between the ICPS and EUS. Uh, sorry about all the acronyms, but so there's a little one, a middle one, and a big one. One has one engine, the middle one has two engines, and the big one has four engines. And the upshot of all this is that, well, the little one can't really push Orion with a full service module. Uh, that is too heavy for it to get over to the moon. And so then Orion can't really make orbit around the moon and that hurts its ability to do any sort of basic mission. Uh, the middle one is okay for that. The big one is overkill. But, and the big one, EUS, can't really go on other rockets very easily. Uh, so, and even if you had like Starship and cut off the top, it's not guaranteed Starship has the payload capacity uh, well, I mean, if you cut off the top and don't reuse it, I guess it probably will. But let's set that aside for now. The reason I'm talking about all this is there's a possibility people have not contemplated. Uh, and you, you, if you just looked at the screen, you'd know where I'm going with this. Uh, so, yeah, I, I looked at Twitter. Nobody's thought of this one. And so I'm happy. <laughs> uh, the possibility is to use the Blue Moon Lander as a transfer stage. After all, as we've seen, the plan with the Blue Moon Lander is for the lander to make the transfer to the moon anyway. It's supposed to go there, capture, and then wait for refueling before landing. So, we can just use it as the transfer stage for Orion. And that's nice because we want a lot of them. Uh, you know, they're going to be made. And they're already sort of meant for a fairly longish mission. They have to stick around the moon for a while, waiting for people to arrive to dock to it with Orion, actually. And and then, uh, well, I mean, in a way, if you use this to get to the moon, then you could just refuel it and then, well, you can't really land. You would have to dock some module to it with the cab lander cabin. We don't have a lander cabin here. This lander is just the tanks part. 
and we have three BE7 engines and the tanks. But the nifty thing about the Blue Moon is it's already sort of configured with fuel cells. It has to be because otherwise it won't be able to power itself. I presume that'd be part of the instrument unit at the top. It takes the hydrogen and oxygen that's included and generates power with it because it doesn't have solar panels. And I have to do that independently of the cabin because it has to be able to land other modules on the surface. And it, so it has the ability to power Orion potentially because it's going to be powering a cabin that is actually larger than Orion itself. So yeah, it's got the power. It can do oxygen generation because that's just a boil off on the oxygen tank. And it can do water generation because that's just the leftover from the fuel cell. So it's got all the things for the life support system. So we don't need a bloody service module. Right. Uh, that weak service module, we can get rid of it. And, and so if you just mass produce these puppies, it makes the whole thing cheaper. And the Delta V situation is actually pretty good. Uh, the, the service module for Orion is, it provides about 1,500 meters per second for Orion, which really can't get it into a low orbit around the moon and have it break orbit uh, or have it do a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but this one can transfer to the moon capture around the moon and bring it back even from a low orbit because after you do the transfer to the moon that's 3130 or so uh, that leaves you with 2000 meters per second and you need, you need 800 for capture and 800 to return i haven't got the launch escape system here of course that would change things a, bit, a little bit but you can do everything as long as uh, you know uh, blue origin can figure out how to control boil off and they've got lots and lots of layers of insulation because when I thought about how much fuel these could carry I realized that well the tanks can't be that big because otherwise you'd be carrying way more fuel than would be necessary for their purpose so they must have a lot of layers of insulation on these and of course they have radiators as well and I did my best uh, guess as far as the dry mass is concerned of course we don't have the specific numbers yet but based on what they said was the mass of it and the capabilities of it uh, this would have to be somewhat similar to what they they're planning on and so what we have here is a 63 ton craft which is pretty close to the lander version as well because orion itself is not too different from that and it gets all this delta v so i think this is a good idea um ICPS is sort of weak and can't really help Orion do its thing. The EUS is overkill and can't be launched on many things. Uh, 63 tons also can't be launched on many things. But what if we did have the Starship that wasn't a Starship? The Starship tank alone, no top, and allowing for this to go on top of it. Well, that could easily carry this to orbit. Uh, even if we assume that Starship is really heavy right now, but you know, you could take the heat towels off, you could take the fins off, and you can take the nose off because this will be the nose, you just need something to mount it with. And so then this becomes very easy to launch on Super Heavy plus the sort of tank alone Starship. Uh, or it could launch on an expendable New Glenn, it could ex uh, launch on an expendable New Glenn. Uh, though I don't think they want to expend those, but it's possible. Or we could just refuel this stage after the fact, which is a pain in the rear end, but it's possible to just have another vehicle refuel this to top it off and then send it over to the moon. So those are all possible, but uh, the one I want to try out is option A. That's what option A looks like. Now, I don't know if we would have all this shrouded it could be that we just extend this all the way up here that's possible uh but yeah this, i think it looks better like this so this tank is currently 55 tons dry and it's sort of a question mark how heavy just the tank would be that's not including the skirt bit i've got that separate and it's not including the forward adapter that's separate and the engines and of course we don't have the tiles we don't have the fins so 
55 tons. It might be a little bit heavier than that, but I didn't have a good match here uh, for that kind of tankage mass, so it could be a little bit heavier. Let's see how much margin we have, because this sure isn't telling me any details about the launch situation, especially since we have to reserve some fuel in the Super Heavy. So here we go. Let's try it out. All right, so I'm not launching out of 39B because it seemed to wiggle all the fairings off. So this is more stable today. Uh, SAS on, throttles up. I'm controlling it on my own because there's weird staging stuff happening. And But I'll try to shut off Super Heavy to reserve enough fuel properly and all that business. And actually, we need to line up with the moon before I forget that. Got some cloudiness. Or... I think that's just a lot of cloud. Okay, we've got a lot of cloud. SAS is on, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. Well, we'll have oxygen from the boil off anyway. Hopefully. I should have put more oxygen in, that might be a problem. Oh, yeah. Thick cloud. Okay, still more cloud. And finally getting above the cloud. Past Mach 1. Well, there's a shot. That is a heck of a cloud. Yep, it's all cloud. It's just one huge cloud. Okay, I think we'll take that. Uh, I need to actually move those down. Okay, hot staging and go and throttle up. All right. And sea level engines. Well, I think we have a lot. We have a lot of extra. I don't know when they would separate the launch escape system in this case, because this is a pretty big tank and it could have problems. But I'll assume that they would get rid of it here. So when you see that Delta V, though, it does bring to mind the other question I had, and which I'll broach in a separate video, which is. What if we just didn't have that big uh, stage here at all? If we didn't have the nose part of Starship, if we didn't have all the tiles, if we didn't have the fins, maybe if we omitted an engine or two, would it be able to just transfer Orion and a service module over to the moon directly? No other stage. It depends how light we can make this, right? So, but it's, it's a possibility, it depends how light this is, and it's, it depends on how light we make whatever's at the bottom of Orion. With a 60 ton load, it can't do it. With a 30 ton load, like with the regular service module, I'm not sure. Now, right now, the Blue Moon doesn't have enough RCS for docking. That's because the model by EsaQuest had some of the RCS ports on the cabin portion. We need to add some RCS ports to really make it work out. So, my mistake there. But I'm not gonna do the full mission with Orion. We're just gonna see that I can get to orbit and then do a transfer and see the Delta V that it has after the transfer, just in case there was a number issue, like obviously the rocket had a number issue on the Delta V reading in the VAB. We should just check that out. And as far as the full mission is concerned, well, we'll think about what what is the happiest architecture that we can muster. Oh, we're going way high. Whoops. Okay, whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, we probably didn't actually want to leave that in orbit. You can see it has 1,841 meters per second 
in orbit here. Uh, it ended up being a lopsided orbit, but uh, yeah. So can we push that up so that it's good enough? So that, well, I mean, really, this is probably an okay business. I mean, we've got a service module here that happens to be a transfer stage. But, you know, there are possibilities here, is all I'm saying. So, separation. Didn't really want to leave it like that, but... Let's use one ignition here for now. Alright, that's just to separate. Oh, he'll want me to... The thing about the BE-7s is they take a little bit of time to do the burns. And we should have started already. Well, we could wait in orbit, but I don't want to. So we'll just do it. All right, node, RCS, whatever RCS we've got. Do we have any? We don't have the downward facing ones, so I don't know if we can actually sell the fuel down at all. Okay, almost settled. Okay, go. It's wrong about... well, that's probably the wrong burn time anyway. So there's the downside. It's got a long burn time. But then again, so would the US. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's probably not a big difference. And ICPS also has a long burn time. Well, sun setting behind us. I don't know about the oxygen situation. So we're probably not going to be able to do any more than this burn for now. If I enable cross speed, no, we're still sort of losing oxygen here. Now you might wonder, well, why not just use Centaur 5? And it's mainly the fact that the Blue Moon tanks are, I mean, the Blue Moon bit is configured already to support a crew cabin basically. I mean, it must have the fuel cells, must have the other stuff that would help support a crew cabin. And it is also meant to contain the boil off for much longer than a regular stage of a rocket. Uh, it is meant to hang out around the moon for a fairly long period of time. So it would probably fulfill all the requirements for Orion much better. Well, we'll be a little bit late, but not too bad some uh, some inaccuracies because of the long burn leading us to use more delta v so we don't have the 2000 that i was hoping for but still we'll have more delta v than the regular service module ends up with well i'm gonna leave it for now it's a little bit far out from there but uh, that gives you a basic idea, and we're talking about 29 tons over to the moon, uh, which is not bad, not too different from Orion with its service module either. Uh, so there's that too. But this gets more delta V because obviously, obviously the hydrolox is more efficient. It's actually, the dry mass is probably heavier than that of Orion's service module, uh, but because the efficiency makes up for it, uh, then it can deal with that. So, uh, well, let's see if we can get a nice shot of it. Well, that's the nicest shot I can get for now. So there you have it. Orion paired with the Blue Moon Lander stage, not the cabin part, not the lander part, and no landing legs or anything like that. It's a thought uh, if they can do it, but you know everything's up in the air unfortunately so anyway with that thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time